show you really quickly of how you could do a poppy. Let's do one that's sideways. <clears throat> and my voice is going to give out on me today. But let's do one that is sideways. So I can draw a little bit heavier on this paper and show you. So I can do a half moon. That's what we got here. A half a shape of moon. I'm going to do a little bit of wiggly bits at my top. So here's a little bit of a half of that. Now to do the back side, I'm going to come in just a little bit here. I'm going to come up with another wiggly bits coming around. That's a second leaf. And then I can pop in another one here if I want to. Wiggly bits like there. That's poppy. That's all there is to it. Now to do the stem, you're going to come down here at the bottom and just do a little bit of bended stem. And there you have a poppy. Now, now these pods are very simple. If you can draw a U and put a little bit of wiggly bits at the top, you got a pod. So your U shape is going to be a little bit more curved rather like a horseshoe. If you think of a more of a ho horseshoe and less of just a straight U, that's going to be the pod shape. Then you're going to come up and you're just going to do a little bit of ruffly bits at the top. And there you have a little bit of a pod or a seed pod for your um, poppies. It can have a little bit of a button on the end. And again, curve your little, your little stems. And all of a sudden now you've got a little bit of a poppy or a, poppy a little bit of a hook this time. And then let's add the poppy little pod at the bottom. That I kind of think of almost as being like a little bit of a pistachio. If you think about pistachio and it's opening up, it's got a little bit of a bud here. This is going to be just the tiny bit of a color. And there we go. We have our stem for our so hollyhocks are very much, they're another simple flower. All they are is a little bit of a rounded circle, a soft one, kind of just not as strong of a wiggly bits on the top. I like to say wiggly bits a lot, but you're going to have a rounded circle. They're going to be bigger at your bottom and then get smaller as you go up. This part here at the top are going to be the pods that are closed. So those are going to be the pods up here. To do your circles, they're just a soft circle. You could have the little center. Hollyhocks have those little bright yellow centers. You can put those in there if you want to add that. And then you're just going to stack them up kind of one behind the other and go on up as you go. And then they're going to get smaller. That's a hollyhock. Pretty simple flower to create. This is the cone flower shape here is where we're going to start. It's another simple shape. This is going to be a like a gumdrop. So it's got a little bit more of a different type of shape. So it's not a, just a U. It's going to have a gumdrop feeling. So I'm going to do a smile face first. We'll do it here. A smile face first. And then it's got that cone shape. It's going to have a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a steeper curve, I guess is what you would say. We're going to have a little bit of an arch. We're going to come around and then kind of copy that shape I just drew. And by adding that little bit of contour line to my flower, it's gonna make it look like it's bending around or going around. And then I can come out and just keep on going. These are simple little petals. There's nothing fancy about these petals. They're easy to draw. And when you put a little grouping together, you're gonna have a bunch of little coneflowers. That's all there is to a coneflower. So you can go ahead and stack them up. It looks nice when you're doing a composition is to have them different directions. So you can have um, like one to the right, one to the left, one going a little bit straighter. So if you'll notice that with um, your groupings, if you can overlap things, have them turned different directions, they're all going to be um, making a different type of a, a look and helps make a nice compos uh, composition. We have one more, we're gonna do a tulip. Now there's all kinds of tulips, but this one here I'm drawing has more of a rounded or a spoon top to it. If you think of a spoon, how it's got a little bit of a rounded edge to it. So it's going to be wider here and it's going to come just to a spoon top. There are tulips that do have ruffly bits at the top, but you can make yours ruffly too, but I'm going to stick with a spoon top. So I'm going to come here. It's going to be narrower here. I'm going to get slightly water, wider and then go ahead and continue with that spoon top on there. So that's going to be the one that's off to the center. So it's going a little bit off to the side. That's going to add a little interesting look to it. Now to do the next one, it's going to be tucked behind. So I'm going to just do a half of that. So here's another spoon top that's going to stick in there. It's smaller. The tulip, as long as you're layering your items over top of each other, 
that's what's going to give it that tulip look. And as long as it comes in at the bottom, so it's going to be wider at the top, it's going to have that gentle line that comes down, and that's going to give you more of a tulip feeling. Now here I'm seeing just the side one, so I'm going to have a steeper curve here and then bring it around like that. Now this back one, I can come up, just do the top of my spoon, and that's going to be tucked inside. There you have, you already have a little bit of a tulip shape. But when you add the layering, it's all going, to, going to be a little wider stem here. That's going to be a tulip stem. They're wider, they're thicker. And then to do the leaves for a tulip, you're going to hold your pencil back a little bit farther so you can loosen up your hand a bit so you're not so exact. And uh, you're going to create a creative line. So you're going to come out, come in. Tulip leaves are pretty long and they are thicker as they come down. And that's how you're going to create a tulip leaf. So by just doing those simple little shapes of the spoon shape, uh, adding that on there, layering your petals, doing these wider leaves, and with a point, you're gonna make it look like it's a tulip. So those are the cards I'm gonna I'm be gonna doing. I'm gonna start with my tulip today, and I'm going to just paint it first with plain water. And I'm going to come in and work a little bit on my um, start out light. Here. You always start light and then work your way dark. So I'm going to start light here and I'm going to go ahead and just tap this in. I'm doing a real loose watercolor look. Okay, so here are my colors. I call this the watercolor magic. It's going to do its own thing without me doing a whole lot of work. Now there is one thing I wanted to point out. When you're doing watercolor, it's actually preferred, and if, if you have some of these, is the white of your paper showing through because those are going to be your brightest whites and you won't get those back once you cover them up. Unless the only way you can add them back in is if you use a gouache or some acrylic paint is what you add your whites back in with if you needed to. But normally you want to try to leave some of your white paper showing. So now watercolor is going to dry a little darker. So I want to make sure I are lighter. Sorry, I said it wrong way. I want to make sure I do have some contrast. So I'm going to keep on adding a little bit more of this color in. Maybe I want my darker at the bottom. But again, I'm going to let my colors blend together and do that watercolor magic. And I don't have to do a lot of work to get it to happen. And it's going to create its own little colors. Let's do a little darker back there. Ooh, isn't that beautiful? I can see those colors all melting together. The more water you have on there, you're going to get some, <clears throat> it's called blooming. And your colors are gonna kind of separate and create their own little patterns. So I'm gonna add that on there. I'm gonna let that sit and dry and do its watercolor. And ooh, that's gonna be beautiful. Let's add some of that dark in and let those colors just sit and work and do their magic. I'm gonna add a little bit darker color in there. Isn't that pretty how the colors just kind of melt together? Now, I didn't add any uh, color on my center stem, but I wanted to show you what will happen because my red is still a little wet. If I come in and add my green down here and I touch that area, where my paint is wet, my green is gonna wanna flow up into there, which will make a little bit of a brown because your colors will mix together. But you can bend your paper a little bit, get it to blend a little bit. And I don't mind a little bit of red. Do you see how those colors are kind of blending together in there? And it's blending down. So let's see how that dries. And we might add a little bit of background. This looks really pretty too with a little bit of, um, We'll do some splitter splatters. You can see how my colors are kind of blending here together because those two areas were wet and my color is gonna travel right a little bit of orange this time on those edges. I'm gonna choose one area and let my colors just blend together. Now, when you're doing watercolor, if you get a lot of water on there and you're like, oh, that's too much water, use a little bit of paper towel and go ahead and tap it on there. Let's wet this with my clear water again. So there's like a light color purple, but I'm going to be darkening that up. So I'm going to take that little bit of that brighter color. Let's drag some of that in. I can be very messy with this color. I don't have to be exact. I can just pop in the color and get a really interesting look with just doing that. So I can pop that in. 
Oh, I love how it picked up a little bit of that orange. Oh, it's going to travel down in there. Let's see if I can't hold it up just to show you how that color is blending down there. So I touch just the corner of that color. And now that orange is wanting to follow down into that flower. Very pretty, fun, fun, happy accident. And let's do a few little splitter splatters. Now the paper underneath is dry. So these dots will be a little bit stronger versus if my paper underneath was wet, they would go ahead and they would spread right on out. So by adding them on when they're dry, that underneath, their spots are gonna stay that way a little bit more. I will add in a few more darker spots with my micron pins at the end. Let's use a little bit of this brighter orange this time. Let's come in here and we're gonna pop that in. So now my paper was dry when I went on there. And I'm just gonna lay in these colors. I wanna show you that you don't have to be exact. So you can just come in, lay this color in. I don't even know if there's orange hollyhocks. There might not be orange hollyhocks, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I make up my flowers more often than not, and they're not necessarily, they don't have to be real flowers, but I could just come in and then add that color in and create my own creativeness with my colors and come in and add those areas in and they don't have to be real flowers they could just be fun flowers so i'm going to let that dry so you can come in though and you can go ahead and pick up a little bit of color so you can come in and give it a tap and add a little bit of pattern if you want to with your paper towel so you can pick up a little bit of color and I'm going to hold this up a little bit closer so you can kind of see how that color is flowing through. Now I'm going to do a little bit different color. For I'm going to go a little lighter for my back ones here. So I'm going to do just a brighter yellow color in my back ones and add a little bit of a difference. Let's add that up here. Add a little bit more of that orange on this one. So these will be like a yellow orange. Okay, let's go ahead and tap just a tiny bit of this other red color in here. How we're gonna Do you see that, how that's blending in? So this color I touched my other, I touched that color down there. So that color is going to run right into my green. But I think it looks kind of cool. do a lighter version. I'm gonna do a, like a pink version, a pink and peach version of a poppy. Okay, so there's the pretty little pink flowers. Let's see how they dry. Let's add a little bit I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of the black in here just to do my black centers. See what happens. Let's dab a little bit of those little black. You know how they have the little seeds everywhere in the poppies? Let's go ahead and tap some of those in there. Let's add the little bits on there. Come right here. Let's add a little bit here. I'm gonna take my zero one and I like to scribble. It's not for everybody, but I like to scribble. And I like to do a little bit of continuous line work. So what I'd like to do is, I'm using a micron pen, a zero one. So it's going to dry permanent when it dries. And I like that zero one tip because it's nice and um, small. And I'm gonna come in, put my, my marker down. I'm gonna twist and pull. I'm not trying to copy exact. I want some very loose, organic work. I'm going to maybe go over my lines a couple times even past my flower. I'm going to really loosen my line work up. I like that look of kind of being more hand-drawn and not exact. That's just the type of, of artist that I am. I'll hold this up so you can kind of see the little line work and how it just adds another quality to my painting. I'm going to come down here and again I'm twisting my marker loosening my hand up trying to go a little bit past what I did even doubling up on some of my lines pushing and pulling creating back going backwards here okay so that lines you can see how I went past and I didn't even follow and going past my lines adding on on there you can add a little bit of flower if you wanted to add a little bit more doodle work in there I love to doodle okay I think that's great I love that look I think that was so pretty and I make a beautiful card let's see if I can't do a little bit of scribble this one's still pretty wet yet we'll see I'm going to add a few little lines here some strokes on there just to give it that little bit of look like it's all connected 
twisting and turning my hand do is I like to add wax onto my card. So I use um, any Salon wax on the top. Watercolor is not a permanent medium just as is. So if you were to get it wet, it's going to move around. So you reactivate it and get it wet again, it's gonna move around. So I like to give these a fair amount of time to dry and then I like to wax them. But after they're waxed and the wax is dry, I can go ahead and mail them. So I like to give these a good amount of time to dry and then I will go ahead and send them. So that them. is it for me, ladies. And we appreciate you popping on in and, and joining us today. Bye now.